Yeah, of course, on the USA side, we've got a returning archer in Jacob Wookie, 35 year old, got a silver medal at the team event at London 2012. Lined up with Jack Williams and Brady Ellison. Ellison is the uh, most vocal of the three. Uh, let's throw to Mark in the stadium for the team introductions. Well, here we have it. It's time for the semi-finals here in Paris, where home nation France take on the USA for a place in the final and a place at the Olympic Games. Absolutely critical here. Win this match and you're going to Tokyo. Up to the mark. Who better to start than five times Highland Archery World Cup champion Brady Ellison? Brady has given some real advice there to his teammate about the wind conditions changing. I think he said it was different from the, where they were practicing just over the other side of the field. Got a lot of pressure on the young 21 year old here, Jack Williams. There's a sense of determination amongst these three Americans. But perhaps a little harder for someone so young. Shooting into the eight ring for a 27 at the halfway stage. And I'll talk about young. Here's another young man, 23 year old Thomas Sheru. Oh. Called an eight. I think we need to watch that one because I think it could be a seven. I tend to agree with you. Pleon. Corrected over to the other side. Both a bit low. Valadon whacking it in to the 10, but a 26 means a halfway point lead for the three Americans. said Ellison is the most vocal of the Americans great grouping as well for those arrows in the 10 so whatever he's saying it's working I think they're having big discussions about those flags you've just seen the shot there the big feather flags giving quite a lot of information yeah, yeah. 
A 57 finish for the USA. Uh, means that this is now out of reach for France already. Two set points up. USA find themselves. And again, we're in this awkward situation uh, where the team shooting second know that they cannot get any set points. So it's a little bit of practice. And as you said, Nikki, it's about maintaining or building confidence going into the next set. Yeah, I mean, they might not even know that they've lost. You know, if you're in the zone that much, sometimes you're just not aware of what's going on around you. So, you know, just stay in your bubble, stick to your process, keep doing your same shots, all you've got to do. Uh, staying in your bubble, a phrase that we've become used to over the past 15 months or so. Very appropriate to archery. Nine. Nine. Finishing with a 52, but crucially, the set points are with the USA. Okay, so a lot of uh, talk from uh, Brady Ellison and clearly a lot of listening from his two teammates. Is there any question that before this match, France would have gone, hey, this is a tough one, but we've still got another bite of the cherry? Would they have allowed those thoughts to enter their minds at all? I don't think they would, you know, the calibre of this French team, you know, they're not a walkover here. You know, they won't be thinking about the bronze medal match, they'll just be thinking about this semi-final, these arrows, stay in the present. You know, there's no point thinking of the future, you don't want to think of losing because you're up against a good team. You've just got to do whatever you can do in this match, you know, to win. So, you know, you've got to stick with your brain right here, right now. Yeah. It's such a tough... Uh, match really the, these the, these next matches uh, the, the two if you make it to the semi-finals you know you're still in the game and uh, uh, but if you lose the semi-finals you really I don't know you've just got to adjust your mindset going into the bronze medal playoff and make it the final make it your final uh, with three places available and four great teams who've all been shooting really well today it's uh, going to be very tough luck for the team that finishes fourth Well, France trailing by two set points after the first set. We'll shoot first in the second, and it's over to Thomas Shiro. So still and calm, isn't he? Looks very strong at full draw, doesn't he? Yeah, really focused. You can see his eyes latched onto the centre of the target. You know, he's just running through the process and executing everyone as he wants to. No. 28 at the halfway stage. But, remember, the USA shot three tens in their last three arrows. Have they dialed in to the center of the target? Eight. No. <laughs> An eight. An unusual eight. Now, we had a six from Ellison uh, in the quarterfinals, but we think that that was a... Not necessarily a technical fault, but a malfunction in, in something in his process, or the arrow fell off the off the off the rest. There, though, that looks to be a wind affected one. So now his communication skills come up to the fore as he has clearly passed on the right instructions to Jacob Wookie. Do you think it was just wind related? I do. Yeah, I, I was surprised by that because I thought he had it all figured out in that first end at the first set um, telling his teammates exactly where to aim we can see those feather flags keep going over to the right now they've changed again and as a recurve archer you can see all of that in your vision at full draw so I just think you know it's quite a lot of information to take in and you just gotta pick your spot and shoot the best arrow you can I'm not sure I picked his spot there again the look at that windstock there it's 
Nicky was talking about shifting around. I can actually see it almost still, but that is the problem. The, the wind is just not consistent. Valdon. Ten would be nice here to put a little bit of pressure on the USA. Nine. Nine leaves them with a 56 out of a possible 60. Three tens, and it will be a 58 for the USA. is quite phenomenal. So an eight to draw the set, nine or a 10, and the USA will be four up. That is a 10, he is absolutely coming into his own. He looked good a couple of years ago before the world went on pause, and Jack Williams has come back out and he looks to have polished off any of the rough edges that he might have had. He is anchoring this team absolutely superbly. And remember, just 21 years old. Yeah, America have just recently gone through their Olympic selection process. Um, and then these three guys obviously came out on top. And, you know, that was quite a process. You know, the, the level, the depth they've got in America to even get into those top three spaces is really, really hard work. So, you know, he will have been tested. He will have been under pressure already this season. And he's come here with that confidence of making the team. And, he, and he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, absolutely is. France. Staring down the barrel of gun, there is Pierre Plion. He is the, I don't know, the energy mass within the French team. He absolutely contrasts the cool, calm collectedness of that man there, Thomas Chirot, who's fist bumping with uh, de facto team leader, Jean-Charles Valadon. They will need to bring their combined skills together to fight back here in this semi-final they lead they sorry they trail by four set points to nil and will shoot first in a must win third set well, it looks like it was on the line and it is only an eight it could have been a much worse but it's about as as far out on the eight as you can possibly get Nine. both going left here nikki do you think uh they need to have a word with valadon yeah i think this is the problem in america we have the same issue with the, with going left so I think generally the flags are flying to the right down there. It's probably a case of over aiming off because those feather flags move when there's not a lot of wind. Nine. No. I'll correct it out there for Jean Charles Valadon at 26 at the halfway stage for the French team. There's a real lack of follow through with, with Wiki, you know, he's just, as soon as just shot the arrows through the clicker, he's gone off the line and, you know, want to see a, a, a little bit longer to follow through, make, you know, make sure that you finish the shot before you walk away. Seems to be working for him though, doesn't it? I mean, he's done that throughout the quarterfinals, he's done it through the semifinals, he's just given uh, Jack Williams a, a, a little bit of extra time to do his stuff. You don't understand why he's doing it, but perhaps there's no need. Now they should be confident that 
Williams is the man to anchor the team. 35 for France at this stage. So finishing off with a 54, quite gettable for the trio lined up for the USA. First up, Brady Ellison. Oh, that's what he wanted. You can see how much this means to Ellison. Two arrows away from booking a place at the Tokyo Games. They have five points to play with. Yeah. Shoots fast. <laughs> Leaves fast. 49 now. 54 the target to get the one point they need. Surely on Jack Williams' form, we are not going to be seeing a five. Yes, Jack. Ah. What a finish <laughs> from the USA. And yes, Jack was the yell from Brady Ellison. A big hug between Ellison and Wookie. And the USA have taken this in some style, beating France in the semi finals six points to nil. And the USA will be shooting at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. And you can bet your bottom dollar they might well be standing on top of the podium in just a few weeks' time. Superb finish from the USA. Absolutely superb, Nikki. Yeah, incredible. You know, you can just see how much it means to them all, and Brady particularly. You know, Brady has won pretty much everything there is in archery, but he hasn't got an Olympic gold medal. He's won bronze, he's won silver individually, he's won team silver. He wants his gold medal. So having that team there with him is not only going to give him the confidence, you know, and the whole atmosphere around him, but it's going to give him that other opportunity for that medal. So you can just see how happy they all are. Absolutely delighted. Uh, well, look, don't uh, wave goodbye to France just yet. They will be back out for uh, the bronze medal playoff. Jean-Charles Valadon, uh, Pierre Plion and Thomas Chirao have one more opportunity. Uh, but the USA team, well, Jacob Wicke navigated his way back into the USA team and has navigated himself, Ellison and Williams in America's Millennium Falcon to the Tokyo Olympic Games. Nikki, you must have realized I couldn't get away without a reference to Star Wars throughout the whole of this uh, <laughs> competition with Jacob Wookie making it back into the USA team. Uh, I know that they're going to be uh, lining up in the mix zone at the moment. We're just waiting to hear confirmation that we will get a chance to have a chat with the USA who have just confirmed qualification for the Tokyo Games. We're taking a look back at that semi-final with France as uh, Valadon, Shiro and Plion get another bite of the cherry in the third place playoff. A brilliant finish from the USA. Three tens. In fact, all three sets, they finished with three tens in the second rotation. They were just too good for France here in Paris. As I say, the French team of Valadon, Chirot and Plion will get another chance in the bronze medal match. What a pressure match that will be. Just seeing the target, the American target, most of the arrows just drifting off to the left as Nicky Hunt, former world number one and our expert analyst is saying the wind just swelling around and the communication from Brady Ellison being absolutely critical and look at what it means to that USA team.